Uh, today I'm going to share some of my experience and uh, you know give some tips for research especially for those who are very busy clinicians. We have nothing to disclose. Uh, at this moment the clinicians are tied down by various responsibilities. This may be the daily clinical work, the work-life balance, most of us are involved in teaching. On top of that, we have to do certain research and publish. Many of us are involved in management of various hospitals and the patient. We also have to think about clinical career and to maintain this clinical career, we have to continue our qualification. And in this uh, tied down situation, then uh, we have to uh, do good research as well. So as far as the research uh, for a clinician is concerned, the current scenario in our country is something like there is no institutional support. So the institution is just concerned about the work and the, their requirement, but they do not have major support for the research and publication in our country. Uh, the funding is almost zero, about 98% of clinical research are self-funded rather than the funded from the institutions. The language we use for doing a research and publication is in English language, which is not our native language. And many of us will find that it is difficult you know, to write a research paper um, in this Eng English language. This is the salary we have at this moment. So this salary is clearly not enough for us. So what we have to do is we have to run from one institute to another, from one clinic to another clinic, which will occupy our time. And what it get give us the extra clinical work in different clinic that will give us a little bit of more peanuts. And it's clearly not sufficient for most of us at this moment. And if you think in this scenario, the scenario of the support and the scenario of the salary we get. If you add on a good um, quality research and a publication which will consume majority of your time, you'll feel that this is a very difficult job to perform. Which has been proven, this is a statistics of our, our country's um, you know, promotion delay. So this, this statistics is taken from uh, various uh, medical colleges. And what we found that 70% of promotion delay is because of lack of papers. So research and publication is difficult, not only for the clinician, but also for those academicians who are working in medical colleges, who are supposed to write their uh, research paper very often. Uh, another um, aspect of uh, a different research, I'll not go into detail of this survey, but this is about 120 participants uh, in this survey. And when we ask them, do you feel that research and publication is a weak part in your professional work? This is again in a medical college and 70% of the faculty, they say that research and publication is a weak part in their professional work. So do you think, uh, another question that we asked was, uh, do you think that you are not able to give time for research and publication? because of your clinical commitments. And again, in this case, about 65%, they say that yes, uh, and it is uh, difficult for them to give time for research. So this indicates that uh, we consider research as an extra effort or a different activity than our clinical work. And that was my concept as well. So I always used to think that the research is completely different and I have to manage time and effort out of my daily work. So it was my concept until I joined um, a research course in San Antonio, Texas uh, by a very eminent researcher like um, Volker Mushal and John Carlson. So in that um, study, in actually this group of people, they published a very fantastic uh, book, the basic handbook of clinical orthopedic research, which has been circulated to in us, all of us in our group which is a very handy book for all of us to read. So the point is, uh, the theme of that course was amalgamation of research and clinical work
to make your daily work. So your research and the clinical work are not two different things. These should be combined so that it becomes daily work. So when you work in daily basis, then at the same time you are doing research and the clinical work. This is the only way by which a clinician can conduct a research and do their daily work. This was the main theme of that course. So this um, was you know, incorporated in my practice in 2015. And you see that the number of papers uh, that has been published since 2015 when I incorporated the, the research and clinical work in my practice. Then a major change in my practice that took place in 2017 when I started a fellowship program in my institution. Initially, it was at both uh, Army Hospital and the BNB Hospital. So since a new colleague started joining me, younger energetic colleague, and the research, doing research was part of their fellowship, then I started having much more papers from 2017. And these, um, you know, work giving us, started giving us some fruit as well. If you can see that in 2018, um, our team uh, won a two, uh, you know, award of paper. This was Young Surgeons Award and Base Paper Publication Award. In 2019, again, we had three awards won uh, by uh, the paper of our team. And in 2020, there were two awards that were won. And after uh, 2017, I had much more colleague to help me out. So we had published one chapter in Elsevier Journal. And then we have already published two books, which is, um, you know, um, circulated at this moment. So all this was possible because of amalgamation of research with work. This is the point I was trying to come. So when you combine your research with your daily work, then it becomes very easy to do a simple research for us. It's so seven the, hours. So with this experience, uh, I'd like to you know, summarize uh, 10 tips for our colleagues. Uh, the number one tip is we must understand our limitation. We cannot do all the research um, that is available to us or that has been done by, you know, so many researchers worldwide. So we have to understand our limitation. There are various limitations, especially in our part of the world. So what I suggest is rather than thinking what problem the world is having, Think what problem your work is having. So try to solve the problem you are having in your work. So what the problem you are having in your daily work, that should be the topic of your research. So it will be very easy to conduct the research. The second tip is, what are the conditions you commonly deal with in your day-to-day -day practice? So you have to conduct a research on most commonly, commonly occurring condition in your workplace. And to identify what is the most commonest occurrence of the disease or of the condition in your work, you have to do a census of your hospital. If you do a patient census of inpatient and the outpatient, then you will find out what is the most common in, commonly occurring disease. Then it will be easy for you to identify which field, in which field you are going to do research. The third point uh, is uh, make full use of the team. Uh, one of the major limitation of our work is we do uh, research on our own. So only one person, two person, especially the doctors are involved in research. So if we can incorporate doctor, nurses and even other staff is possible when you do a research may not be as a part of a author, but as a part of supporter. Uh, to conduct a research, then your research becomes very easy. If you have a capability to incorporate all these people in doing research, then it becomes very easy for you to incorporate research into your daily uh, work. It is, uh, we should keep our record by ourselves. Although many hospitals will have certain type of recording facilities, but these recording facilities will not record um, the variables that you want to research. So especially when you are thinking of a prospective research, you must try to keep your own records. And my colleagues will, in further lectures, will tell us about what are the ways by which we can keep our own record. 
The fifth point is uh, we must make use of our smartphone. So all of us, we have a smartphone, but surprisingly, although this was little older research, the 94% of clinicians have smartphone, but only 3% use smartphone for research purpose. We take picture with our smartphone. We keep, uh, you know, picture of patient in our smartphone. But these smartphone for the purpose of research, focused purpose of research is not very much used in our part of the world. So to do that, we must know uh, certain gadgets, certain apps. Uh, we have to be familiarized with certain app like Telegram, Fiber, uh, you know, uh, OneNote and so, so on and so forth. And on this part also, some of our colleagues will discuss in uh, further lectures. The sixth tip I would like to give is that have a strategy of follow up. One of the major drawback of our research, one of the major cause of failure of our failure of our research is the loss to follow up. So you have to have a strategy for the follow up from the very beginning. And at this moment, uh, since uh, cell phones are available with all the patient, if not the patient, the patient party, so probably a post discharge follow up with the phone call will be a very good strategy. So we have to find out how we can have a good follow up of a patient. The seventh point is we must be part of this kind of meeting. Nepal Orthopedic Association regularly conducts this kind of meeting. And I would request and suggest you to be part of this kind of meeting because this will give you a little bit of energy to conduct research and share your experiences. The eighth point is make the research enjoyable. This is the part I would like to incorporate in my practice. Uh, since I was not able to incorporate this in full fledged method, but some portion of these enjoyable research have been implemented. So what I do is you know, I organize a small gathering, either a lunch or dinner, you know, a half day of outing where we all, you know, brainstorm for a certain part of the research. So, for example, today we, we write a methodology or discussion. So we all have all sit together, give a quality time, two hours time for the research. And then after we enjoy our day, either with the lunch or the dinner. So this makes your research more enjoyable than a stressful um, research process. The ninth is uh, one of the important factor is we do not plan meticulously our research. Uh, if you fail to plan, your plan is going to fail. That is why we must plan your research. We must plan our research. So we have to have a timetable so that it will remind us that we are lagging behind what we need to do. We must a detailed responsibility to all the authors and keep us reminding, keep us pushing, you know, each other. So if you have two, three people, um, you know, pushing each other, then probably research and publication uh, will be easy. And we must know that research and publication is a long process. So we have to find out a reason or we have to find out a method by which uh, we can keep everyone on track. The final um, tip uh, of mine to all my colleagues is uh, make team of differently able people and groom them for research. I'm fortunate to have a fantastic researcher uh, in my team. It may not be possible to for, for all of us uh, to have, you know, all this kind of people in the same institution, but you can have, you can make a research team of people comprising of different institutions as well. So this will give us a definitely a better product and make the research very easy. Thank you very much. Finally, I'd like to say that if others can, why can't we do the research? Thank you very much.